Kia ora ear gunners and self defenders. This one's a bit of a controversial subject. Can you use ear guns for self defense? I've seen a few other YouTubers try answer this, but I'm going to have a crack at it. I'm going to add a few other non lethal options as well as a little self defense crash course. Most of the other reviews all say the same thing no, or get a real gun. Firstly, I'm from a country where firearms are very hard to acquire and it's a crime to use them in self-defense, so my answer will be a little different. I have a martial arts background and I've trained self-defense for almost 10 years in multiple disciplines, including Taekwondo, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Judo, Boxing and Krav Maga, which is an Israeli martial art, or more like a military self-defense system. I'll let you know at the end of the video which are the best martial arts to take and I'll add some online course links in the description as well. The best self-defense is being able to avoid a bad situation altogether. When it comes to home invasions, this means preparation like an excellent security system, great locks or even a dog will be your first line of defense. But if you're out and about, this means not putting yourself in these situations like going out on the town or on your own, or more importantly, knowing when things are about to get a little volatile. Like when you see that fight break out in a bar, don't go and have a nosy and see if you can get a better look, just walk out, even before it starts. Everyone has this animalistic sense where we can just feel tension in the air when something's about to go down. That's when you leave and just take your mates and family with you. A little pre-planning, like making sure you have a lift home or order that Uber before you go wait out on the street. When alcohol is involved, there's just always people looking for easy target. And when you're on your own, everyone's an easy target. Safety in numbers can help there, but not everyone has their friends around them all the time. There's an old Chinese saying that says it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. In other words, it's better to know how to defend yourself and not have to use it than not know how to defend yourself when you need it. In the US, you're much more likely to come across firearms, but the principles still remain, just get out of there before shit gets real. So to answer the question, are air guns good for self-defense? In certain states in the US, I personally wouldn't want to pull an air gun on someone because they could feel threatened and just retaliate with a real gun. But here in New Zealand, and I'm sure a lot of other countries, the laws are different and therefore the mentality is different too. If someone broke into your home, and you pulled out a replica assault rifle or a pistol like this one here that would probably do the trick combo that with a loud get the fuck out or I'll shoot would more than likely send them packing put a laser on it to add some more realism to point that at them and if an air pistol was your only option I'd, I'd recommend this one or this one here. This is the Umarex Desert Eagle and the Umarex Walther CP88. They're recognizable models and they're just beasts and shoot hard for air pistols. I've sold a lot of air pistols and knives and my advice to people that ask me this question is to just buy a blank pistol like this one here. People just want something in their top drawer to make them feel safe at night especially in rough areas. I've had older guys as well as girls that live on their own ask this question. This is a perfect little example. This is an Umarex Smith & Wesson Chief Special uh, 9mm RK blank pistol front firing. It takes these little rounds here. 9mm RK. Blows a flame out the front there too. This one here another it's a 9mm PAK uh, Glock lookalike it's called the um, ISSC M22 a lot of military forces around the around the world use the Glock so another familiar model is a good option I reckon you could be mistaken for an off-duty or something but I guarantee firing th these into the air would scare the shit out of an intruder Wouldn't want, and then you also wouldn't go to jail for killing someone. That's not what we're, what we're trying to do here. A lot of people from America may have a different outlook on this, but I think there'd be a lot of Americans who don't want to kill someone or have a, or have a loaded firearm in their home. So this question is relevant, as stupid as it sounds. 
here in New Zealand you go to jail even if it's in self-defense but yeah the truth is most intruders aren't trying to break into your house to murder you and your family they just want to take your shit just watch most of the home invasion videos as soon as a shot's fired it doesn't become a big western shootout they always know their exit route and they take it if you want something completely non-lethal and all noise then something like this may be suitable these are used for boat events and running races and super loud but you're back to air guns these would sting a little and if shot in the eyes then yes they could do a lot of damage but that's still a risk and you gotta have to be a pretty sharp shooter for that at least you do have follow-up shots but um, but then again how do you keep an air gun ready to fire you don't want to leave co2 in these air pistols or springs under tension so it's just not really practical there are pcps like this one here that can be left charged um, this is the Benjamin Marauder 22 caliber multi-shot but a lot of them aren't true semi-automatics and have to be cocked on each shot anyway so um, they're not really that suited there's probably better options like um, pepper spray or a taser for instance if you're allowed those but coming from a country where these aren't allowed I understand why this question comes up so often I've actually even heard of people using these <laughs> funny enough a fire extinguisher for self-defense but you know if you're resourceful that's just what self-defense is about here's some other options that are allowed in this country this is an extendable baton we can use a police baton like this one very easy enough to get or even a baseball bat to do the trick these can do a lot more damage than an air pistol anyway there are some brake barrels out now that are producing some lethal power like the hats and carnivore 30 caliber that thing's a beast but it's just impractical and the scare factor would probably come into play first I'd say and also you've only got one shot so you'd have to make that shot count you can get repeating CO2 rifles but they just don't have the power of those massive brake barrels a full auto BB like this one here would probably be better for a rushing intruder as you can get more shots off in a short period of time but these just dump the gas fast and the velocity drops right off, right off after each shot they don't really have much power either having such a heavy blowback so you'd probably be better off with just like a heavy object or even a knife and with knives like these they're very lethal and I would never suggest using them for self-defense but if you had no other choice and to avoid murder I'd um, recommend using slashing techniques and rather than stabbing techniques um, although there are martial arts like um, Eskrima, they're called Kali, they teach knife fighting, but you never want to be in a knife fight really. But like the replica air pistols, the show of a knife like this one here would probably be enough to deter a would be attacker anyway, especially a beastie one like this. And these can do a lot of damage, so I wouldn't recommend using one of these either. And remember, a lot of these air pistols and air rifles are heavy and made of solid metal. So they can be used as like a blunt weapon too. But to be honest, anything can. And that's what a good self-defense system teaches you, arts like Krav Maga. Another aspect of that art is to force your attacker into flight mode. It's kind of hard to explain, but essentially by not becoming the victim or the prey. You just show you're not afraid and won't go down without a fight and they're not usually willing to pursue that type of assault. They're actually looking for easy targets, so screaming at them and saying fuck off can definitely help. Don't need to provoke them or challenge them, just stay calm 
But when it's time to turn it on, just go crazy. No one wants to fuck with crazy. Uh, not that I would recommend people use one of these, but this here would do way more damage than a than a uh, air pistol. Not even going to get it in the shot. But this is a repeating crossbow. It's a new design, multi-shot crossbow. I'll put a link below where you can find one of those anyway. Just pointing that at someone would probably be enough. Uh, onto some martial arts. Learning the martial arts, it's a life skill really. Unlike many sports, it's a way to keep fit and healthy rather than just getting really good at throwing or catching a ball. I mean, how does that help you in life, you know? Also, this doesn't mean you train and then go out looking for fights. It's quite the opposite, actually. Once you start training, you lose your ego of trying to prove to others you can fight by being humbled in the gym and also just proving to yourself that you can defend yourself. It's a way to calm young men and vent their frustrations and insecurities. Old men too. So you know trained martial artists start fights unless they're a complete douchebag. But you'll definitely see them finish it because they usually know when to use it. Uh, live full contact sparring is very important too. If you can handle yourself in a gym with a whole lot of other killers then you're way more likely to be able to handle some chain smoking drunken schmuck off the street. You don't need to prove yourself, just walk away. After all, he could be carrying a knife or a gun, which is never worth your ego. And it's usually the ego that gets people into trouble. Anyway, I think this question would have different answers in different countries. Here in New Zealand, no one carries guns, but people do carry knives. Similar to the UK, Australia, and probably Canada. And I know it's the same in Oz, but everyone likes a bit of fisticuffs here. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that firearms are not in our culture unless it's used for hunting. A one-on-one -on -one to dis to settle disputes is quite off uh, common here. Um, a little keychain glass breaker like this one here would probably come in handy if you had nothing else, or even a strobe flashlight like this little beast. Oh, here it is. They're actually designed to be able to sort of semi-stun an attacker give you a few seconds to get away. It also has um, this, these jagged edges. These are designed for self-defense too. I'll put some links in the description where you can find these anyway. Uh, my martial arts recommendations, um, they all have their strengths and weaknesses, but sometimes it's just the closest gym to your house is the best, best place to start. It's just the easiest way to stay consistent. I highly recommend boxing as it has its benefits to be able to deal with close quarter encounters as well as multiple attackers. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu definitely has its place, it's the ultimate ground fighting art where you don't have to use excessive violence either, no one wants to lay, the, lay someone out in front of their kids. Wrestling is great but it's hard to find here in New Zealand, but if you can train MMA which is a full system from striking to grappling then even better. I'll add a link in the description of a really awesome online course you can take too. If you're smaller, older or a female, I'd suggest BJJ as it's all about the weak person being able to take out a stronger opponent. And I promise you there's hundreds of BJJ, BJJ chicks that can smoke dudes. This YouTube uh, girl beats up guy with BJJ. It's probably the only art where you see this that often actually. Another one I would suggest for women would be an art like Krav Maga. It's basically no rules MMA with groin shots and eye gouges, etc. Krav teaches awareness and readiness as well as how to deal with uh, weapons, which is becoming more prevalent these days. It also teaches dealing with multiple attackers, but if there's even more than one, just get out of there, no matter how trained you are. They do teach techniques to deal with this type of situation by changing angles to use them to shield each other so that you're only really fighting one person at a time, but this is quite advanced. That in conjunction with BJJ would be an excellent combo as Krav trained to never go to the ground, but um, that's not always a choice. The general rule of thumb though when it comes to self-defense is just don't let anyone in question within an arm's length of you. That's called the red zone or the danger zone. As long as no one gets in that range, no one can strike you. There's an orange zone too, which is about a leg's length away, uh, where you have more, got more time to react, so it's not as crucial. 
And then there's a the green zone, which is where you're completely safe. I've seen a lot of people say, this is all you need. A good pair of running shoes. I completely disagree. Not everyone's a fast runner. It's like a wild animal. If you run, you become the prey and they will chase. I've seen it before. You've showed your fear and now you have your back to them. So you better be fast. A military style retreat to a safe area for sure. But don't just run aimlessly. So yeah, there's my little crash course on self-defense. But honestly, if you want an air gun for self-defense, make sure it's a semi-automatic replica. But to be honest, the blank pistol would be much better, as well as a good security system, a dog, and some self-defense training. Six months to a year of BJJ and boxing, or a year of MMA, partnered with a good self-defense based start would be more than enough to defend, help defend yourself, I reckon. Again, I'll put some links in the description with some recommendations for self-defense. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll make more videos. Kakite ano, Modi ora.